Hello, and welcome to the More You Know's Saint Spotlight. Uh, today, I am joined with Elizabeth Butler and Michael Thompson, two Thomas More senior art students, and uh, we're going to talk about some of their artwork that was published in the Cincinnati Emerging Art Expi Exhibit uh, in Cincinnati. Uh, thank you guys very much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the exhibit itself? So, it's the Summer Fair Emerging Artist Exhibition, and it happens um, annually. And so there's a couple students nominated from all of the local schools um, kind of in the tri-state area. So I believe um, the Art Academy, uh, UC, Thomas More, and lots of other schools in kind of the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area had representation there. And what first got you guys into art itself? Uh, for myself, I, I've been into art my whole life. Um, a retired art professor had an open studio that I used to go join when I was about 10 to 12 years old. Um, and then when I got to college, I originally came in as an international studies major, and I said, this isn't for me. Um, and I got into the arts, and I, I truly believe that I found my passion now, so I, I know what I love to do. Yeah, same. I've loved art since I was a kid. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money growing up when I was a kid, so we went to the art museum a lot, because it's usually free. And even as a kid, I remember just loving and appreciating the art there, and it had a huge impact on me in finding what I love doing. And can you tell us a little bit about your pieces? We're going to get to them later on in the show, but uh, some of your favorite pieces that you guys entered in the show itself, and maybe just some other pieces that you've enjoyed along your uh, time here at Thomas More. So the pieces that I entered in the exhibit are some for for my senior show here at Thomas More, which is in March. And um, I was really inspired to do fashion design for it. So um, the pieces are ones that I created for the show and I wanted to, um, I was really inspired by um, the punk movement. So a lot of the pieces are kind of based on the fashions and styles from that particular movement, including the um, headpiece, which we'll show later. It's inspired by the hairstyle, the Liberty Spike hairstyle. Um, so a couple of the pieces that I entered into the exhibition, um, the first one was La Portadora de Vida, which means life bringer in Spanish. Um, and it's a painting of an aqueduct in Segovia, Spain. Um, I spent a couple months there uh, my junior year and walking from my homestead to class every day I would just walk into this this massive piece of architecture from the first century BC and it was just amazing um, and so I studied architecture and then I did those paintings based off of that um, and then the piece that we're going to talk about later is titled 13 um, it's also part of my senior exhibition Strange Fruit um, and the piece itself is titled 13 because it is based off of the Last Supper painting by da Vinci as far as the composition. Um, and then, so there's the 13 figures, Christ and the 12 apostles, and then also uh, the double meaning of the 13th Amendment, um, which allowed for um, the incarceration of black males after the end of slavery. Very neat. I, and as uh, we'll get to it later, obviously, your forms of arts is not just a simple slap some paint on a canvas and call it that. You guys really are very experimental and somewhat untraditional forms of arts. Do you guys have any other forms of or a favorite art form to kind of do so, whether it's through fashion or through different ways of painting different things? Um, I actually came into Thomas More um, with an illustration focus. I was really interested in doing um, children's books um, and then I kind of uh, found a, a really strong passion in um, fashion design. So I really enjoy working with um, not only fabrics, but also found materials and um, disposable materials like the straw coat that won the scholarship. It's made out of 2,000 plastic straws. Um, so I really enjoy working with things that are usually not used in clothes that we would normally wear. So like fabrics, but also mixing it with other uh, materials, too. Um, I probably most often work in oil paint. That's my favorite specific medium to work in. Um, but I really love 
uh, kind of doing everything. My show is it's a mixture of large scale oil paintings, but then installation art and sculpture as well. Um, I'm also a poet, so a lot of my work is inspired by poetry and philosophy. Um, really kind of that liberal arts feel tying <laughs> in all of these different uh, niches together to create uh, final pieces like 13. Yes, it all very much complements one another. Mm -hmm. Are you guys a part of any other groups or as you just mentioned, you know, poetry and things like that, do you guys have any other things that you are equally uh, select your attention towards and work on or uh, any other clubs or things, activities around campus? Yeah, um, I'm a member of the Thomas More Villa Players. Um, as well as my art major, I'm also a theater major. So I really love learning about like acting and singing and dance and then using those skills to influence what I create art-wise. So I, I really do feel like the two go hand in hand. Yeah, um, I, I love poetry, like I said. Um, I do, I'm the art editor for the Words Literary Journal. Um, I also do lots of separate kind of poetry events outside of Thomas More. Um, I've done performances at the Arnoff in Cincinnati, um, as well as giving presentations at like the Appalachian Studies Association um, in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, so I like to travel around a lot and kind of put my hand in <laughs> all of the different pots. <laughs> yes, and as you mentioned, it's definitely that liberal arts degree. You have different fields of actually being able to go into a thing that is, one would think, you know, far across the realm of possibilities and just, you know, hit the ground running in that. I can definitely see that represented in the art that you guys have made over the years and such. How long did it actually take for you guys to uh, create your projects? So as far as my senior show goes, I, I'm still working on it extensively. Um, 13, just because it's so big, it's 80 inches by 30 inches. It's actually painted on an old door. Um, sh like, surely the scale of it takes a while uh, to kind of prep it, um, sanding everything down, gessoing it, putting the paint on, putting the charcoal on. So I would say um, <laughs> I spent over a month on it, but that's kind of working on it here and there. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the piece that won the scholarship, the coat, um, I had to sew each straw on individually. So altogether that coat took like five months. It took such a long time to make, but it, I think it was worth it because I really liked how it turned out. And uh, I would say my other clothing pieces take anywhere from like a week to like a few months to make. Gotcha. I definitely know it's the qualities and the time you guys put in it. And that's very well represented. And with that, we are going to cut to a quick break, and then when we return, we'll be showcasing both of their arts. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to the Saint Spotlights. I'm joined now with Michael Thompson, and he's going to be showcasing his artwork that he entered in the Cincinnati exhibit. So, Michael, can you tell us a little bit about your piece here? Yeah, for sure. Um, so this piece is titled 13. Um, it is one of the central pieces that is part of my senior show, um, which is titled Strange Fruit. Um, and the theme of the show kind of has multiple purposes. Um, the main one being I am drawing parallels between uh, the crucifixion of Christ and the events leading up to it, and then um, the lynchings of black men in America. Um, and kind of a lot of the brutality around that topic. Um, and then I'm also taking the, the male black body and kind of reframing it from what we often see um, in kind of popular culture, Western culture that we've seen perpetuated over centuries. Uh, so this piece specifically, um, there are 13 figures. The central figure um, is meant to be the Christ figure and then the other 12 are the 12 apostles. Um, I made a lot of their faces nondescript because I want you to be able to look at this piece and see your friend, your brother, your father, your uncle. Um, and I am, a lot of my pieces are also based off of kind of old religious art and themes. So this piece specifically um, is kind of in the same format as The Last Supper by Da Vinci. Um, and then the 13 kind of serves the dual purpose, like I said earlier, of the 13 figures that are in the frame, 
but then also um, a kind of an ode to the 13th Amendment, which ended slavery, um, but then allowed for mass incarceration of men that look like me. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you uh, are shy, no shy to be uh, painting on non-traditional canvases. Mm -hmm. What did you paint this on? Uh, so this is actually an old door. Um, I, I try to work with a lot of raw materials. Uh, as, an, as an artist, I like to reuse and recycle things. Um, and so this is, this is on an old pine door. Um, I have another piece that's on a large sheet of poplar. Um, so I kind of like to recycle old materials and turn them into fine arts. Now, uh, also another thing that I noticed is it is a bit three-dimensional. You have pieces mm -hmm. of kind of dirt and some clumps of paint just, you know, actually coming off of the uh, canvas itself. Mm -hmm. Is that a, a personal touch on that of kind of making it the dirt and ground? Yeah, so uh, clearly the majority of this is an oil painting, but there's also um, charcoal on here. And then this texture at the bottom is it's clay, wood glue, and black gesso. Um, my grandfather was a coal miner. Um, he died of black lung and he broke his back in the coal mines. And so I am kind of incorporating that theme into the show. And this chain gang specifically um, is one that is kind of related to the coal mining industry, um, especially being from Kentucky and Appalachia. And so I wanted to incorporate that texture um, because clearly this show is very, it's very personal to me. Um, it's a lot about my identity as well. And so there are lots of symbolic elements, not only in this painting, but across the show as a whole. It is very symbolic. And I personally, I love the, uh, the old Renaissance slash just overall Christian artwork mm -hmm. and a merger of two different themes of something along the lines of uh, slavery and the more religious architecture and art is something that I've hardly seen uh, in traditional media, nonetheless, an actual art piece. Thank you very much for bringing this in. Is there uh, any last comments you want to talk about? No, I don't think so. Thank you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. We are uh, going to cut over and go to Elizabeth Butler and showcase some of her pieces now after this. Welcome back, Elizabeth. Thank you for uh, joining me and showcasing some of your art. Can Thank you, you for uh, having me. Can you tell us a little bit about this uh, portrait you got going on? So I did this painting in uh, my painting two class and the prompt was to make a self-portrait but make it a version of you that you would never ever be so like the complete opposite of you and then we were also supposed to add um, like an animal element so a lot of different things going on so I was trying to think okay who am I not and one of the things that came to mind was like oh pompous wealthy. Um, so I decided to paint myself as French aristocracy, so kind of like a Marie Antoinette um, look. And then I have um, a couple cats, so I decided to add cat ears as my animal element. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, headpiece you have? So this is a headpiece that I made for my senior show, Hollow Man. Um, it's inspired by the Liberty Spike hairstyle that was very popular among the punks in the 70s and 80s, which is um, the main inspiration for my show. It, co it combines um, the medium of fashion design with some of the beliefs and ideals of the punk movement. Um, I made it out of paper mache, rhinestones, and then uh, crushed up CD shards. So that, that's why it's real sparkly and kind of um, multi-chrome. I would have never noticed that, that it was CD. I thought it was maybe like glass or some Yeah. <laughs> was it a specific CD you found that you had music on or was it just some random It was just a bunch one? of old CDs that I cut up. I really enjoy using old materials that would normally get thrown away. I mean like some people still listen to CDs but in general you kind of find them at like a yard sale or at like a Goodwill. So I, I didn't want them to go to waste so I I wanted to put them in my art because I, I love music and I want to show how much music inspires me through using CDs in the piece. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, uh, you like using these very kind of almost home uh, 
materials in your uh, auto lots. And one of the pieces that we were unfortunately able to have here is your straw coats. That's mm -hmm. one the physician exhibits. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that? So um, I wanted to create a piece that had the look of fur because that's such a huge thing we see in the fashion industry is these like big glamorous fur coats. But I wanted to do it in a way that you would look at it and be like, wait, that's not quite right. So um, like you said, I really love using uh, weird materials um, besides normal fabrics. So I made the jacket out of um, some flannel and then I took 2,000 uh, black straws and I cut them in half and I sewed each one on. So it created this like huge form that had a lot of like volume and movement. And it kind of has like a similar feel to a fur coat but it, it's very hard and rigid and kind of noisy, actually. <laughs> well, thank you very much for show, showing us this. It's very something different to see up close mm -hmm. versus something from afar or uh, anything else like it. So thank you very much for showing it. Thank you for letting other people see it. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back after this short break for our last segment. Stick around. Welcome back to the Saint Spotlights. I have Michael and Elizabeth back here at the table and we are going to start some of our closing remarks. But first, one of the things that uh, we like to do here is some bits. And with two art <laughs> students, I thought what better time to be embarrassed with my own art skills than to do <laughs> some self-portraits of our own. <laughs> we are going to do a small 60 second self-portraits of ourselves. Okay. And this is exciting. And then, oh, and then, no. <laughs> We're gonna have uh, you know opportunity for you to flex your uh, you know four years what you've learned in sixty seconds on a small canvas. Now don't don't start yet because oh. I need more time than you guys. I only know stick figures. So uh, obviously sixty seconds on the clock uh, of your best self portrait. It doesn't have to be <laughs> no. hyper realistic. Hey, hey. I'm just Start getting ready. Tracing. All right. So sixty seconds in three, two, one, go. So. You know, where do you guys like to usually start with, like your head or like shoulders? Eyes. Eyes? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> There's no wrong way to do it. You're at 20 seconds. Oh no. <laughs> We got 35 seconds. <laughs> what are you doing over there, Michael? Trying to get some curls. We got 45 <laughs> seconds, guys. I didn't make my forehead big enough. Five, oh. four, three, two, one. 60 seconds, yeah. hands down. All right, so flip them upside down. Flip them upside down. Hopefully they won't spread too much. All right. And we are going to reveal to camera two here. Okay. All of them at once. And the audience is going to tell, you know, how much better mine is than yours. Uh -huh. Because it is. You all can right? tell yourself that, David. Uh, <laughs> all right. Three, two, one. All right. So now we're going to flip them around and discuss. Aw, I like how yours is a speech bubble. That's so cool. Mm. That so, is incredible. <laughs> I'm an illustration focus, remember? <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'll, we can start with you, obviously. Of, uh, tell us a little about that in 60 seconds. Um, well, I started with this uh, little oval, which is my nose, and then I added the eyes. I kind of did all the facial features first and then built the hair and the, the face around that, and then the shirt was the last thing I did. It's amazing. It really is. <laughs> I'm selling it for $2.5 million. <laughs> Place your bets now. All right. Michael? Uh, so I, I started with the nose. Um, my sister Maya and I used to do these little caricatures, and we would draw them on Post-it notes and do kind of little plays. Uh, and I always used to kind of draw my characters like this with these quick, fast lines um, that just kind of generalize what the face looked like. And so I wanted to draw myself like that because I knew I could do it pretty quick <laughs> <laughs> really got a both of you guys got your features in like 
perfectly. I just did a self-portrait like last yeah, week, we so I've been looking at myself way self too much. <laughs> it's been a good <laughs> few months since uh, <laughs> my non-existent art credit was taken here at Thomas More. <laughs> so I guess that leaves me with uh, what I have. Um, I started with a big old dome head, and then <laughs> I had an identity crisis of myself, oh, yeah. and I thought, I have glasses or some at least bigger eye sockets than they already do, and kind of just started working after that. And the very last thing for me was my beard, as I realized I don't mm. even have anything on that. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of proud, you know, I, I added just a little bit so it didn't look like I was just a blob at my collar mm. versus you guys who have cheekbone structure and actual work. <laughs> But uh, it's very really stylistic. It's yeah, like Rick and Morty esque. Rick and Morty esque, <gasps> yeah. yes. Well, thank you guys very much for uh, running along with the, the surprise. Can you, show, can you show the cameras one more time of just how your guys is? And then obviously, Standard Joe, that is art student perfection right there. You mentioned you had an art exhibit on Instagram or your sh senior showcase? Uh, yeah, so my senior exhibition. Um, the opening reception is on March 1st at 2 p.m. And um, you can follow the Instagram account at Hollow Man for like more updates and kind of some teaser pics. So yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah, um, my senior show uh, opens April 12th and is open until the 23rd. Um, and you can follow my art on Instagram at Black Swan, um, B-L-A-C-C-S-W-N. Perfect. Well, thank you both again very much for being on the show. It was a pleasure. And uh, for all of you at home, thank you very much for tuning to this first episode of Saint Spotlights. We are excited to bring more and uh, new enrichment stories every week here. And the more you know. Thanks for watching. Yeah.